2022-23 was a great season for Napoli. Luciano Spalletti was in his second season at the club and oversaw a massive overhaul of a squad with whom he won Napoli's first Scudetto in over 30 years, becoming a legend among the people of Naples. But like your favourite Neapolitan pizza, all good things must come to an end. And six months on and Spalletti gone, this season isn't going so well. Napoli are currently a total mess, but the best place to start to tell this story of how it's got to this point is the summer of 2022, when Napoli's charge for the title was just a fever dream. The summer of 2022 saw a big overhaul at Napoli, with many established players leaving the club. This included Kaladu Koulibaly, who went to Chelsea for 38 million euros. The less said about that, uh, the better, I think, for Chelsea fans. Arkadeus Milik left and went to Marseille. Fabian Ruiz went to PSG. Dries Mertens and then club captain Lorenzo Insigne both left on free transfers, going to Galatasaray and Toronto in the MLS, respectively. Now, this left Napoli with some recruiting to do, and they did it really well. Spalletti and, more importantly, the then sporting director Cristiano Giuntoli were given the scope to reinvigorate a team that were really in need of some fresh faces. Among the 11 first-team signings that were made that summer, in came Min Jae Kim from Fenerbahce, Matias Oliveira from Getafe, Giacomo Raspadori from Sassuolo, Frank Gisa from Fulham, and of course, Kavica Kvaratskhelia from Dinamo Batumi in Georgia's first division for just 13 million euros. All of these signings were seen as relatively understated at the time, and very few people would have imagined that this would be the creation of a title-winning side. Napoli went on to win the Scudetto at a canter, finishing 16 points clear of second place Lazio. The summer overhaul that we spoke about more than truly paid off. The signings of Minjay Kim and Kavicha Kvaratskhelia in particular are now seen as strokes of genius by Cristiano Giuntoli. Kim won Serie A Defender of the Year, while Kavicha Kvaratskhelia won Serie A MVP, finishing the season with 22 goal contributions in the league. And that's before we even mention the man who scored 26 of Napoli's 75 goals in Serie A that season. And that is, of course, Victor Osiman. He was in his third season with the club after a 75 million euro move from Lille in 2020. Osiman had already shown his talents during his time at Napoli, but this season his performances shone through and he made sure that everybody knew his name. With Kvarat Skelia and Matteo Politano either side of Osiman in Napoli's now probably famous 4 3 3. Osimhen secured the Capo Cannonieri, which is the top goal scorer award for Serie A. Apart from disappointing exits in both the Champions League and the Coppa Italia, Napoli had almost the perfect season. And that's what makes it really difficult to explain how we find Napoli in their current situation. It's January 2024 as we record this and Napoli sit in ninth, below the likes of the underperforming Lazio and the ever-confusing Roma. Last season, Napoli accumulated 2.37 points per game and they lost four games all season. This season, they are getting 1.47 points per game and, as of the time of recording, have nearly doubled their loss tally from last season with seven losses, which is more than the likes of Torino, Monza, Lecce and 16th place Udinese. They've conceded 24 goals in 19 games compared to the 28 they conceded throughout the whole of last season. Their goal scoring numbers are also down. They've scored 28 goals so far this season compared to the 46 they had at the same point last season. Even Victor Osserman has been affected by this downturn in form. He's scoring 0.61 goals per 90 so far this season, compared to the 0.91 he scored last, which is quite a big fall off. So what are the reasons behind this drastic downturn that will likely see Napoli relinquish their title hold? Well, the first is this man, Rudy Garcia. To give some context, Luciano Spalletti left Napoli at the end of the 2022-23 season and intended to take a year-long sabbatical. He did then take the Italy job three months later, but we'll, we'll let him have that. This gave Napoli chairman Aurelio De Laurentiis a decision to make about a new manager. He, for some reason, chose Rudy Garcia. De Laurentiis himself even admitted that this was a massive mistake, and he even joked that he should have sacked Rudy Garcia straight after his unveiling. It was a really weird appointment at the time. Garcia was sacked by Saudi club Al Nasser in April 2023, and it obviously wasn't a very memorable period in his career, as this is the Wikipedia extract from his time in Saudi. I think that kind of says all you need to know. The appointment of Garcia proved a mistake from the off. He lacked the motivational skills and the man management capability to pick up where Spalletti had left off, never mind his tactical decision making that kind of baffled a lot of people. This was always going to be a challenge for Garcia, given Spalletti's popularity in Naples, but he always looked destined for failure. He lasted just 12 league games at Napoli. This included a few incidents of frustration from key players when they were being substituted when Napoli were losing or drawing and needed to get a goal. This included Victor Rossimen and Kvaratskhelia, who both on separate occasions were infuriated at Garcia's decision to take them off. Garcia never really seemed popular with either the fans or the players and his tactics and decision making left a lot to be desired. Poor results and really poor performances in both Syria and the Champions League left his position untenable. 
Once the inevitable happened and Garcia was relieved of his duties, De Laurentiis had a decision to make about new manager. He opted to replace him with the former Inter, Watford and Napoli head coach Walter Mazzari, who is a man known across Italy for making a lot of excuses. But surely this appointment would go a lot better. Well, not really, no. Mazzari has been known throughout his coaching career to be a man who adopts a three-at-the-back system, and Napoli, as we mentioned earlier, have played the 4-3-3 under Spalletti. Rudy Garcia tried to keep it, didn't really work under him, and Mazzari's also tried to keep that 4-3-3. Again, it's not really working. But Mazzari has continued with this against his typical tactical style and probably his better judgment, and it's a decision that hasn't really paid off so far. Napoli is still struggling and the team is still in really poor form, but this isn't really helped by a few key things that have happened throughout this season. First off, they are really missing their centre-back, Kim. He left to join Bayern in the summer because of a release clause in his contract that was activated by them. And his replacement, the Brazilian Natan, who they got from Red Bull Bragantino, has taken a really long time to settle in and has never really looked up to speed in Serie A. It's really not helped by the fact that Garcia just refused to play Natan for the first five games of the season, which didn't help him gain any sort of match sharpness at all. Kvalat Skelia also took a really long time to get back to even close to his form from last season. And the summer additions of both Jesper Lindstrom from Frankfurt and Jens Kajust haven't really elevated the quality of the squad in any areas that it really needed it. And this poor summer recruitment is largely down to the loss of sporting director Juntali, who we mentioned earlier was the key figure behind signing Kim, behind signing Carrot Skelly and all the others last summer. He left for Juventus in the summer and has left Napoli without a real recruitment strategy that has worked and has overall left the team quite a bit weaker. And on the pitch under Matsuri, things aren't getting much better. They're winless in four games, having lost at home to Frosinone 4-0 in the Coppa Italia. They lost 2-0 away at Roma, with both Politano and Osimhen being sent off. Safe to say it's not really going well. Oh, but it gets worse. Um, in Napoli's most recent 3-0 loss, which is bad enough away at the Inform Torino, New January signing from Salernitana, Matsoki, who is a childhood Napoli fan, was sent off just four minutes into his debut for this, which I think we can all agree isn't going to be rescinded anytime soon. So, can Matsari turn it around? Well, we've said throughout this that it's not looking great. It's not looked great for the whole of the season. Napoli really needs some reinforcements in January, most notably, I think, a centre-back, so they don't have to play Juan Jesus ever again. And they also could do with another centre mid to help support the trio of Angisa, Labotka and Zielinski who have all struggled for form so far this season and really looked off their best that we saw from them last year. Angisa and Osman are also off to AFCON which just adds salt to the wound even more. It really doesn't make Matsari's job any easier. But of course we saw last season that Napoli do have that quality to win the title in Serie A. Admittedly they don't have the, the manager still there but in the short term they at least have that quality to challenge the likes of Fiorentina, Bologna, Atalanta to get those final Champions League and Europa League spots. But the pressure continues to build on Matsari, and if you are to believe some of the rumours, he might be relieved of his duties with Antonio Conte seen in the crowd in that recent loss to Torino. So where do Napoli go from here? Well, if they fail to reach the Champions League, or even if they do reach the Champions League, there are rumours suggesting that both Osimhen and Quarot Scalia will be looking for moves elsewhere in the summer. This means that it's really crucial that Napoli identify the correct next coach for this rebuild in the summer to work alongside their new sporting director, Mauro Meluso, to ensure that this next phase of this rebuild, a really important part, considering they might lose those two really important players, is under a manager who's given time to restructure this whole team. In my video about Monza a couple months ago, I discussed the four managerial candidates that Napoli were looking at at the time before they uh, appointed Mazzari, and that was Monza manager Raffaele Palladino, who that video is about, Thiago Motta, who's at Bologna at the moment, Vincenzo Italiano of Fiorentina, and Francesco Farioli, who's at Nice, who I've also done a video on that you can check out. They'd all be great choices, but whoever De Laurentiis chooses, they have to be given time and the right recruitment plan to rebuild a team that Spalletti turned into legends. And they have the small task of potentially replacing two of Napoli's most important players in the last 30 years. And these are decisions that will define Napoli's future for years to come. So will Matsari last the season? Where will Napoli finish? Will Osman and Kvaratskhelia be there next year? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. But like if you enjoyed it, it really helps me a lot. It helps me know whether you well, enjoyed the video or not. Subscribe if you'd like to and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching.